Grab your nearest VHS tape, stick it in your stomach, and press play because it's time for the Criterion Edition review of Videodrome. Stay tuned. <laughs> Hey everybody, I'm Ken with Mid-Level Media and I'm here today to talk about Videodrome, uh, which is an older Criterion release. And if you are new to this channel, I wanna go ahead and let you know that sometimes I don't always review uh, the latest and greatest in 4Ks and new Blu-rays. Sometimes I'm gonna go back to the past. Uh, to some of these older criteria, maybe some older Shout Factory, Screen Factory titles, and I'm going to review those as well because there's a lot of movies that I want to rewatch, I want to catch up on, and I think it's important and kind of fun to go back and experience these older releases and talk about them with you guys because I love movies, I love all kinds of movies, I don't just love the newest stuff that comes out. So we are going to talk about Videodrome today in depth. I'm going to break down the film itself, I'm going to talk about it, I'm going to give that a review review score. Then I'm going to cut to a quick unboxing of the packaging. I'm going to give that a review score. Then I'm going to talk about the audio and visual quality as well as the special features for this set. So before I get into it guys, I want to go ahead and ask you guys please, if this is your first time discovering me on Mid-Level Media, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and also be sure to like this video and comment down below your thoughts on the movie Videodrome. So this movie is directed by David Cronenberg. If you're not familiar with David Cronenberg, his most notable film, to me at least, is The Fly with Jeff Goldblum uh, that came out in 1986. He also did a, a History of Violence. Um, he did Eastern Promises. Those were his more recent films, at least more recent notable films. He's done at least 23 films that he's wrote and directed most of them. He is a writer and director, and he has written and directed a lot of his films. And I'm going to talk a little bit about David Cronenberg's filmography just in comparison to uh, to Videodrome because I just did an event on my Instagram page, Mid-Level Movie Reviews, which you can follow me over there if you're not already. I have a link in the description to all my Instagram pages, my Letterbox account, all that stuff down below. Uh, you can click on that and you can follow me over there. But I did an event through the entire month of December called A Cronenberg Christmas, where I tried to go back and watch and review as many David Cronenberg films as I could, because up until that point, I had only seen The Fly and History of Violence, and I was a big fan of those films. So when I went back and I watched films like Shivers, like Rabid, like uh, The Brood, I think uh, Scanners, um, The Dead Zone, those earlier Cronenberg films, I wasn't exactly a huge fan of them. And up until this movie right here, I would say that his filmography was pretty disappointing uh, for me. They dealt a lot in the kind of explicit and gratuitous, just sort of really gross, vile, lowest common denominator type of gore. Um, and it just felt really low quality, most of his movies. They lacked character, they lacked depth to the story. I just didn't enjoy a lot of those early Cronenberg films. This movie, to me, up until this point in his career, is probably his best film. Of course, I do like The Fly better still. I like A History of Violence better. Those, to me, are stronger movies. I still need to check out Eastern Promises um, at some point, because I hear a lot of people say, really great things about this movie, but I don't know, there's just something about this movie in particular. It's very strange and very weird. It still has that kind of Cronenberg sensibility to it, um, but I dug the story. I dug just how deep this movie takes you into the hole um, of madness, and you got James Woods in this movie. James Woods, a legendary actor. He's been in so many great films. He's fantastic in this movie, and I don't know if it was his performance that just kind of brought it all together for me, um, but he is great in this movie. He has to sell so many weird, unnatural things in this movie. So many things that if 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 somebody sat down like in a pitch meeting and told you this is what you're going to have to do, like I got to put a VHS tape in my stomach, I, I don't get what's going on here in this movie. TV is breathing, it's making sexual noises, uh, the screen is coming out to here, he's putting his head inside the screen. There's so much... Uh, just subtext and um, just really unnatural behavior 
and scenes in this film that just feel like you're almost in a dream or in some kind of out of body experience. It's completely weird and unnatural, um, but I did love every minute of this film. It was just weird enough to grab me and pull me into its story. There are great makeup effects work in this movie. You have the great Rick Baker um, who did the special effects and the makeup work in this film. And even he talks about um, in one of the documentaries, which is specifically uh, about the makeup and special effects, about how he kind of looked at the script and what David Cronenberg wanted him to do and wanted him to accomplish. And he's like, I need some context behind this. It, it's very hard to pull some of this stuff off when you don't know exactly uh, what you're doing. He talks about how he's used to making like creating werewolves, creating monsters, um, creating gore scenes and stuff like that. Just people getting their arms chopped off and things um, of that nature, but he doesn't know exactly what Cronenberg was going for um, with the TV scene, with the VHS tape in the stomach. So many odd um, instances throughout this movie that he had to try to design um, these uh, kind of uh, models after. And he, 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 was, he seemed very confused um, in that documentary. But yeah, great makeup and special effects work. I, I really did enjoy this movie at the end of the day. I thought it had a satisfying con conclusion. It felt like it had something to say, more so than any other um, David Cronenberg movie before it, just about like technology, the dangers of technology, like how we are growing attached to it. Um, in that way and it just felt like it was saying something unlike any of his other films before it So for the actual movie, I'm going to give this movie an 8.5 um, Out of 10. I think it is a good movie. It is not great. It's not a masterpiece But I think it's very good and definitely up until this point was Cronenberg's best work So let's go ahead and right now we are going to move to the unboxing portion of this video all right, guys, welcome to the unboxing portion of this video drone review. Right here, you have the iconic image of James Wood's head going into that TV with the lips. You have David Cronenberg's uh, video drone at the top. You have that criterion symbol right here on the side. Guys, I love the different colors, um, kind of that, uh, that network TV, like when they have to go off the air, the please stand by colors uh, right there. That's really cool. Right here, you have the spine guys with the same thing on the side. You have the video drone right there. Let's look at the back right here. And right there, guys, you got the special features. You got the synopsis at the top. This movie is 89 minutes, made in 1983. This is the Blu-ray edition. Let's go ahead and look at the side. And this is what I love right here, guys. You have the actual Blu-ray case in here, but it has this kind of old school videotape, almost like cassette tape uh, spine to it. Let's go ahead and take that out right there. It says, long live the new flesh, which of course is kind of an iconic line from the film. You got this side right here with the VHS tape as well. We'll go ahead and open this up. You got a booklet on the inside right here. Flip through that there for a second. I got some images of James Woods and that, uh, oh, that is a gross scene right there with the videotape in the stomach. All right, guys. So we'll kind of zoom in right there. You got the chapters. You got this disc. I love the disc artwork on this as well. It's really cool. And this is an early Criterion release, like I mentioned earlier. This came out 10 years ago from the Criterion Collection. So they were doing awesome, interesting stuff even then. So let's go ahead and get back for these special features in the audiovisual quality portion of the video. As far as the visuals go, guys, this is an HD digital transfer. Use that to remove thousands of instances of dirt, um, and debris from the film and it looked really good there were some sequences where I could tell were a little bit rough just seemed a little bit of that lower quality but overall no issues with the visuals I would say for an early Criterion Blu-ray this is a really decent transfer overall I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10 for the visuals. As far as the audio, the audio was crystal clear for the most part. Uh, very few hiccups within that, so I'm giving that a 9.5 out of 10 for the audio. Now moving on to the special features, guys, and that's where you get um, into the real greatness of this set. I'm gonna talk about one special feature in particular that I thought was just fantastic. I couldn't believe it when I actually saw it because it's something I didn't notice um, when I first picked up this set, but it's an awesome special feature. Uh, this has, uh, you know, like I said, the makeup and effects work stuff. Uh, it's about a half hour documentary. Just It has David Cronenberg in it. It has Rick Baker just talking about everything that went into the makeup and special effects work of this film. It's a completely fascinating documentary um, that I really did enjoy. 
Then there is a short film uh, that Cronenberg did. It's a movie called Camera. It came out in 2000. It, it was very weird. It was very Cronenberg. I can't say I enjoyed it, but it's a cool feature um, to have included in this set. Then you have all of these kind of like snuff film shorts uh, that were included. One of them looks like it was like a real life version of what was actually filmed in the Videodrome within the movie. Um, so that was very strange and weird. It was just this girl that was getting stripped down and whipped. Um, and then you had some kind of what I would call like a Japanese softcore porn. It, it, it's very weird. Two samurais come in. It's a girl and a guy and there's like a threesome going on. And it's it's a very weird um, thing to add into your Criterion collection. But you have these people like talking over it. You have commentary on it like Cronenberg and some of the other people that worked on the film. I can't say... I was crazy about that portion of it, but you know, for softcore porn fans out there, uh, you will enjoy that section um, of the Criterion release. But um, let's get into the real meat of this set, guys, because you have a half hour round table discussion with um, John Landis, who directed some of the best comedies of all time with the Kentucky Fried Movie and Animal House, and then of course one of the best horror films of all time, American Werewolf in London. Then you have David Cronenberg himself in this round table, and then guys, then you have the legend, the horror legend himself, John Carpenter. All three of them are in a round table discussion just talking about the state of horror. And this is in the 80s. This was filmed in the 80s around, I think, 1982. Just having a discussion about the state of horror, um, how it's kind of transcended throughout the decades, um, talking about the rating system and how ridiculous it is at that time because they were big on, uh, you know, it was okay to have violence in films, but it wasn't okay to have certain sex uh, scenes in, in movies. And they were just kind of bitching about that amongst themselves, uh, talking about each other's movies and what parts of each other's movies that they enjoyed. It was a really cool, awesome roundtable discussion that I had no idea was in this Criterion release until I actually sat down uh, to watch this special feature. So that is definitely probably even over the movie, uh, that was the highlight of this set to me. So for the special features, guys, I got to go pretty high on this one. I I'm giving the, the special features for, for Videodrome a 10 out of 10 just based on it. that makeup documentary was really good and that roundtable discussion. You know, softcore porn excluded, uh, there was some great special features in this set. So for the movie, guys, I am giving an 8.5 out of 10. For the packaging, it is a 9.5 out of 10. For the visuals, a 9 out of 10. For the audio, a 9.5 out of 10. And for the special features, that is a 10 out of 10. For a overall score of a 9.5 out of 10. For Videodrome, the Criterion Blu-ray version of it. So with that, guys, that is my review of Videodrome, the Criterion release. Go ahead and comment down below your thoughts on Videodrome. Did you pick up the Criterion version? Do you have it in your collection? What are your thoughts on the actual Criterion release and the movie itself? Leave all of that in the comment section below. And also be sure to like this video, guys. If you want more content like this, if you want more videos like this, the best way to do that is to show me your support and like this video. And also be sure to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already for more great content like this. Go ahead and follow me on my Instagram page pages, mid-level media, and mid-level movie reviews. I am also currently on Letterboxd right now. You can follow me on those social media accounts. All of those links are in the description below. So with that, guys, I'm Ken with Mid-Level Media, and we'll see you next time.